One of the things inside of the WordPress 5.9 update that I was really excited to take a look at is the navigation block. Now, I don't come to expect a ton of things out of the core blocks that come out of WordPress. I'm mostly reliant on third-party services like generate blocks or cadence blocks to give me all the functionality I need. But because of the full site editing experience, they had to come up with some more theme blocks that would help make all that possible. Now, I do expect that third-party vendors are going to start making, you know, expanding on these things and making them a whole lot better. But I did want to dive in here today and take a look at the navigation block as it sits today, if it's useful at all, uh, what its limitations are, and if we could start using it on our websites right away. So let's jump in and take a look. Okay, so we got this dummy install loaded up here, and I'm going to drop in the navigation block and we'll take a look at what you can do, what you can't do, uh, where I've gotten stumped and how I think this might be useful, uh, hopefully fingers crossed. So we'll just jump in here and we'll drop a navigation block in here and you'll see right away you're presented with a few options. So you can select a menu. Now you can create menus inside the navigation block, which is this first section you're seeing here. So you can save multiple menus in this new style of creating menus or you can actually pull from one of the classic, what they're calling classic menus now, which is the way you're used to creating menus here in appearance menus. Uh, so for now, let's just pull one in. We'll pull in this classic menu here and you'll see it'll take just a second and you'll see this list view expand. And so now we have kind of individual blocks for each one of the items inside of our navigation. So uh, this first item here, second item, third item, we get down here to this one labeled blog and it actually has a drop down. So you're seeing here, uh, the drop down menu is automatically created for you. Everything's good to go. Now what's neat about this is you're able to manipulate this menu from right here inside the editor, not having to leave it, go back into the menu setting, change your menu, come back into the editor, then do whatever you need. It's all right here. So for example, if I wanted to move this content link around, I could just grab it and press the arrow button and move it around. If I wanted to change what this said, uh, we'll just put demo here. I can change what it says all right here with inside the block editor. So for me, that's a huge improvement. Um, you can also, if you want to add things to it, you can click the little plus button and you can start adding things. So this will pull in any pages or post from your site. Uh, you could type in a URL here. So I could do the admin bar.com, open it in a new link. I'm sorry, in a new window, press enter. I can change the label here. So visit tab and we see now that menu items all set up just the way we want it. So for me, this is one of the huge things I'm really excited about this navigation block for. And when I first uh, started using it, I had my hopes up pretty high because of the way all this works. Now, we're going to talk a little bit about the reasons why uh, those hopes have been dashed a little bit. Uh, but let's take a look at starting a menu completely from scratch. So I'll just jump back up here to my navigation and delete this out. So let's drop a new one in here. Navigation. And we'll start empty. And so this will just basically give us the blank shell for the navigations and we'll add links just like we did a second ago when we added the admin bar link. We click add a block and then we can search on here. We search for our home page, and we can add that in there. We can go back to the navigation and we can add another one. So uh, content was one of them. So you can go through here and search any posts or pages on your website. Um, now, one thing that's also neat is you can go down here and add social icons and search icons as well as your site logo. So if you're building like a whole uh, nav bar section, you wanted your logo and the navigations, you can do all that inside the navigation uh, block, which is pretty nice. Now, there are some things that I don't know if are, are like known bugs or mistakes or are they meant for this to operate this way. I can't imagine it's supposed to be this way, but let's take a look. Um, so I'm going to add social icons in here. So this works really similar to the drop down. We'll play with one of those as well. Um, we click in here and then we can add social icons. So we'll add Twitter, go back to the social icons link, add another one, we'll add Facebook. And then you can click on these and decide where you want them to go. I'll just put a hashtag in there for now. Okay, perfect. So now we have those links in there. Uh, let's do one with a sub navigation too. So every once in a while you go to click another, uh, add another menu item and it doesn't work. So let me see here. Sometimes if I click off of it and click back on it, it'll let me do it. So I ended up having to refresh the page in order to get this work again. Uh, but before we add in the sub navigation one, I'm going to go ahead and delete these social icons out of here because you're going to see some of the problems and I want to go into those a little bit separate. So I'm just going to delete that out of here, go into our navigation. We'll add a new one for blog. 
put that in there, and then we can create a submenu. So right here inside the toolbar, you hit add submenu, and then we can add links just like we did before. So I have some post layout ones that might make sense for the blog. So we'll add this, we can add another one, post layout two. And so you can just keep adding them that way. So now you see you have your nice little drop down menu. Uh, you also have in this toolbar up here, if we go back to the navigation, we can check if we want this left justified, center justified, right justified, which is probably what you're going to want if you're building kind of your main navigation. That's what we see most of the time. And they also give you the option to space evenly in between all the items. Which, so that's pretty nice if you're building some kind of sub, uh, sub navigation, secondary navigation, I could see using that. And I wouldn't have expected this to be in here, so I'm pretty pl pleasantly surprised to see this. Now let's go back to justifying the items to the right. And I'm going to go in here and add social icons again. And you can see that my menu just jumped back over here to the left. So we'll just add this one Twitter one in for now. And this is where I'm running into a problem that I don't know if this is expected behavior or not. Uh, but if I go to my navigation here, no matter what I change the justification to, it just keeps it on the left. Now the social icons have their own justification settings. So uh, if I go back here to social icons, I can change the justification here too, which doesn't seem to do anything. Uh, so even if I justify this to the right and go to my navigation and justify it to the right, nothing seems to change. So while it's pretty neat to have the social share things in there, or excuse me, the social icon links in there, and uh, there's also an option to add a search bar in there, which you can just pop in there, and there's a couple little options in there to change the placeholder text, move the button around, and all that. Um, the way it's automatically spacing things out in here isn't isn't the way I would always want it. So now we see we have the... Uh, the social icon here and the uh, search next to it. We can move the social icon around and it puts it over there. Maybe that makes a little bit more sense for nav layout, but it doesn't seem like you have complete control. Even if we move this social icon all the way to the left, then it's kind of grouped things differently there too. So I would love to see it if we had a little bit more control over how all these things are positioned, but that doesn't seem to be the case. So just so these things don't get in our way here, I'm going to delete out the searches and let's take a look at what customization options we have for this. So inside here, we can uh, have a little bit of control over the overlay menu. So this is going to be your mobile menu. So you can have it completely off where this will stay, you know, an inline menu, no matter the screen size, you can have it on mobile only, or you can have it always show the mobile menu. So no control here specifically for tablet. So you're limited to uh, desktop and mobile only, uh, but that's not always, you know, the worst case. So that, that probably doesn't bother me too much. Now we'll go back, we'll put this uh, to mobile. On the sub menus right now, I have it, it just defaults to when you hover over it, the sub menu comes out. You can change that to force you to make a click to do it. Uh, I probably wouldn't do that, but it's nice that the option's there. You can decide whether or not to show the arrow. Let me move this back to the left so we can see it. Right now it's got the little arrow next to it. We can tick that and the arrow goes away. So uh, those are nice little options to have. Inside the color, this is where we get super limited. So we have the text color, so we can change the actual color of the text, but we can't change the hover color. So we have the plain text color, but not any kind of difference on hover. Uh, same goes for the background. We can change the background color, but we can't change it for hover, and it changes it for the entire width of your block. Uh, so that might not be ideal. I, I can't imagine styling a menu just like that. Maybe there's some, uh, some instances. We can do the same thing with the sub menu, and this also controls the overlay menu, which is the mobile menu. So your sub menu, this drop down, and your overlay menu would be the same settings here. So you can't differentiate between those. But I could say, okay, I want gray text in the drop down. So even though these links are blue in the drop down, they're actually this gray color. So you do have a little bit of control there. And then same thing on the background here. We'll just change it to black so uh, we can see it. Sub menu and overlay background. So this should go to black now, and it's not. Uh, maybe this will do it on the front end, because what I was going to say is um, in, in some of these instances, like here you're seeing when I hover over this, the color is changing. But if I update this, save it, and we jump over to the front end of the site, you'll see that the actual uh, hover colors aren't, aren't doing the same thing they are in the back end. So uh, that 
menu is also not a black background in the back end or in the front end. Uh, so we're having some uh, continuity issues between the back end and the front end, which is obviously not ideal. We want to be able to see as much as we can displayed exactly how it's going to be. So definitely some limitations there on the styling. Uh, to follow that up, we have typography settings. It automatically just gives you the size. Uh, you can click that button and type in whatever size you want in pixels, M or rim. Um, but if you click on this plus button, you get the option to change the appearance, the decoration, and the letter case. So this gives you the ability to change the weight, uh, an underline, or a strike through. And then you can change the letter case to all uppercase, all lowercase, or sentence case. So you have a couple typography options there, but not a ton. Now, obviously, I think the color thing is the most limiting for me that we can't change the hover colors. And then like we saw the the background on the drop down wasn't working for whatever reason. Now, before we go into some more of the customization stuff, it is good to know that if you click on this navigation block here, scroll down and under advanced, you have the option to name this menu. So right now, let's just call this uh, WP demo menu. So you want to save these things because it's actually something you can reuse all across your site. So this stuff, you know, is really built for the full site editing experience where you're going to be controlling these things more globally. Uh, so what's nice about this is you kind of already have that built in. Let's say we built this as like a secondary navigation in our blog, and we also wanted to put it on another part of our site. Well, we can go in here and just drop in another navigation block. And then when we select the menu, that one that I just saved, WP Demo Menu, is right here. So I can drop that in and we have another copy of the menu. But what's nice about this is they are linked together. So if I change this in one instance, demo, you'll see it's updated in the other one as well because this is using the same menu. So uh, while sometimes you might not want that to happen, the fact that you can get that to happen, you don't have to go multiple places and chase that down on your website, I think is pretty handy actually. All right, so Last thing I want to do here is just show you a little bit of what I got into as I started doing some of the styling. I'm going to go ahead and save this and we're going to jump uh, to the front end and jump in the customizer here. All right, so you'll have to forgive me. I am not a CSS wizard. I can work my way around a few little things, but uh, definitely not advanced things. And I think that's where a lot of people using this are. So maybe that's a good thing. So we had to find a way to solve the color problem where we don't, we can't control the color of the text and the hover. So that's the first thing I wanted to solve. So if we use the selector WP hyphen block hyphen navigation hyphen item, we can actually target each one of those items. So now we could say, you know, we want the color to be, we'll just make it a gray color. And you can see that changed immediately here. Uh, we could copy this, paste it down here, add hover, and we could change this to a different color. So let's just say blue. So now our hover would work the way we want it to. So it's a pretty simple fix, but it would be so much nicer if we didn't have to jump somewhere else and then write code to make that happen because the color changing on hover is something that uh, you're probably gonna wanna control of, uh, control of on any uh, navigation item. So again, this is built for full site editing and there's probably some ways that works better within that system, but using the navigation block in a traditional theme, uh, definitely limited. Now, uh, another thing you might've noticed when you have this drop down here, it automatically puts a border around it. I don't really care for the border. So I wanted to figure out a way to get rid of that. Now this uh, selector is a little bit longer. So I'm going to copy and paste it off screen here. We can drop this in here and then we can just say border none and that will get rid of the border here so that's that's a pretty easy fix if you know where to find the selector uh this is not one that i would have just picked out i i kind of happened upon this one so uh lucky guess um the other thing would be putting some kind of button in the menu so a lot of times you'll have your call to action in the top menu um, so this is one we can accomplish as well so i'm going to go ahead and jump back in here and we'll just add a new link um i think i have a a page called CTA. So we'll add this as the final uh, link here in this menu. And what I can do is go into the advanced tab here and give this a class. So we'll say button demo. Um, so now I've attached a class just to this CTA link. So I'm gonna go ahead and update this and save it. And then we're gonna have to refresh here in the customizer. Okay, so we'll jump back in here into the additional CSS and we can work on trying to make this a button. So um, we called that button demo and then we put WP block navigation 
item underscore underscore content. And that's how we can target this item here. So now we could say, um, you know, give it all the attributes we would need to make it a button. So we could say the background color is blue. And of course, I spelt that wrong. Background color is blue. Uh, we're gonna need a different text color so we can say that the color is white. We're getting a little bit closer. We can add some padding so we can say uh, 0.5M and 1.5M to give it a little bit of padding. And then we can add some rounded corners. So we'll add a border radius and we'll do four pixels. So we're already starting to make it look like a button here. Uh, again, might be easier if it was inside the, the actual editor, but that's definitely not something I expected them to have the capability built in to do. Uh, but of course, we're gonna wanna take care of hover on that as well. Uh, so I'm just gonna copy this selector here so we can make a few changes on hover. Do colon hover and we'll do background color, we'll just do um, green. So now we should see when we hover over it, we're able to change the color. So again, this is a pretty easy fix and I like that you're still able to do this because you know, in, in many of our navigations, we need a button. But this also comes with a downside and one that I wasn't able to figure out before uh, recording this video. If we go in here into the mobile settings, we'll see now our menu has gone to the hamburger menu. When we click this open, uh, a few problems I have with this. One is it automatically expands any of your drop-down menus, and I'll show you why that's a problem. We're gonna make a slight change here, and I'll show you why that's a problem. And then this isn't the same selector uh, for this button. So what you'd probably have to do is go in here and set up some kind of media query. Uh, so you only target this on the desktop and, la uh, and tablet sizes and not the mobile. Figure out something different for mobile or just leave it a normal uh, link. Um, but I guess that's not the end of the world, but it's definitely something to be aware of that this code alone is not gonna fix the button issue. But let me show you one more problem I have with this. We're gonna go here and I'm gonna change this navigation to right aligned like we probably would have at the top of our website. We'll update this and I'll go refresh the customizer again. Okay, so this is one big problem I have with this. Obviously you can see this is how I'd normally do my navigations. This is how I'd want it here. All that looks fine. I would be pretty happy with this other than the little button issue. But when we go into mobile, uh, we would have to target the actual hamburger icon with CSS to change any of the color or styling because these are the defaults that are in there and there's no way in the editor to change that. But when we open this up when it's right aligned, it's right aligning all these menu items, which I get, we, we made the menu right aligned, so that makes sense even though that's probably not how I'd want it. Uh, but all these drop downs inside this blog go to left align and they go to kind of the left of this container here. So I don't see how this is passable at all. Like I would not want to put that on a website whatsoever. So then we're running into the situation where I need to create two menus and have show a different one on mobile than I do desktop. That's a huge pain. I don't want to do all that. Uh, avoid drop down menus. That's probably not always possible. You look at a site like uh, the admin bars website. And we only have, I think, three menu items here in this part of the navigation, but it has five drop downs and four and five. You know, something like that inside this setup would be completely unusable. Uh, so for me, that's definitely one of the deal breakers in here. So there's a quick look at how the navigation block works inside WordPress 5.9. Is it useful? Well, Kind of. I could see myself maybe using it for something really simple where maybe I didn't need any mobile options for it. But really, if I needed the typical navigation I use on my site, I don't think there's enough control there now to be able to make it useful. Now, what usually happens with these things is we rely on some of the third parties to go in and extend this functionality. I could definitely see somebody like Cadence Blocks adding to this navigation block to the, fun the core functionality that WordPress has built in and actually build out something that's completely functional. But we'll have to wait to see exactly how that pans out. 